This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Scientists from NASA have confirmed that last month was the warmest August on record globally. Much of the world, including Central Europe, Northern Africa, parts of South America and the western portions of North America, saw much higher than normal temperatures. According to the National Climactic Data Center, August was the 354th consecutive month with a global average temperature above the 20th century average. The news comes as flooding in India and Pakistan has killed more than 400 people and displaced nearly a million. The flooding is the worst to hit the Kashmir region in half a century. Severe drought in Central America has left nearly 3 million people struggling to feed themselves. And California is suffering its worst drought in over a century. Meanwhile, a new report by the Norwegian Refugee Council has found more than 22 million people were displaced from their homes by extreme weather last year, more than three times the number of people displaced by war. In the Philippines alone, over 4 million people were displaced by Typhoon Haiyan. On Tuesday, world leaders will gather here in New York for a one-day climate summit called for by U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Climate activists have planned a series of events leading up to the U.N. summit. On Sunday, more than 100,000 are expected to take part in the People's Climate March here in New York. More than 2,000 People's Climate events are planned worldwide in 150 countries. On Monday, climate activists are planning to stage a mass sit-in in the financial district of New York in an action dubbed Flood Wall Street. Well, today we spend an exclusive hour with the acclaimed journalist and author Naomi Klein. She's just out with her latest book. This changes everything. Capitalism versus the climate. It's her first book since her 2007 bestseller, The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. Before that, she wrote No Logo. Naomi Klein, welcome back to Democracy Now! Congratulations on the book. What changes everything? Well, climate change changes everything, and it, it changes everything for the reasons Juan just outlined. We are on—it's already upon us, and we are on a road towards warming of 4 to 6 degrees Celsius. We only—we've we've, we've reached 0.7 or 0.8 degrees Celsius, and we're already seeing these effects. Once you get to warming of that level, the models start to break down. I mean, climate scientists don't know what to expect. Things start going nonlinear. And, um, and so it changes everything about our physical world if we just simply do what we're doing and continue down this road. Um, so the argument I'm making in, in the book is we do have the opportunity to get off that road, but in order to do so, we have to change pretty much everything or some really fundamental things about our economic system. The good news is that the things we need to change, many of them are broken anyway. We need to make vast investments in the public sphere, which would create millions of good jobs. Um, we, need, we need to invest in health care, in, in education, um, in the sciences. Um, and in so doing, we will tackle one of the most intractable problems we face, which is gross wealth inequality. We can't fight climate change without dealing with inequality within our countries and between our countries. So the argument I'm making is really quite a hopeful one. I think if we do respond to climate change with the decisiveness that the scientists are telling us we do, if we respond in line with science, we have a chance to remake our economy, the global economy, for the better. Uh, and uh, But this is not going to be the kind of change that comes from below. It's going to, from above, it's going to be the kind of change that is demanded by mass movements from below. Well, Naomi, but one of the central theses of your book is that uh, the inability so far of our society to be able to deal uh, with climate change goes to the heart of the system. Yeah. Uh, and you say at one point, we have not done the things that are necessary to lower emissions because those things fundamentally conflict with deregulated capitalism, the reigning ideology for the entire period we've been struggling to find a way out of the crisis. Yeah. Could you elaborate I mean, on that? So the book starts from the premise um, that that the things we have done to try to, to address this crisis have failed. And this is not a controversial position. It can't be when when we look at the numbers, and, and, and the numbers don't lie. I mean, governments started uh, negotiating uh, to, uh, to, uh, towards emission reduction in 1990. That's when the, 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 the official negotiation started. And since that time, emissions have gone up by 61 percent globally. Um, so it's not just that we're not solving the problem. It's, 
is that we're making it a lot worse. And in concrete terms, we see this every day. I mean, that we see the contradictory messages of those alarming uh, reports, ever more alarming reports coming from scientists on the one hand, and on, on, on the other hand, political leaders doubling down on the dirtiest and highest risk fossil fuels. We're tearing up this continent to get at shale gas, to get at tar sands, uh, to get at coal um, in mountains. Uh, you know, we're detonating mountains. We're just going for it on the most, you know, horrendous level. So how do people even hold these these contradictions in their mind? So, so there have been all these theories put forward about why we, uh, you know, have failed to deal with climate change. And you often hear theories related to human nature. You know, we just can't deal with a crisis that's far off in the future or the political system is blamed that, you know, politicians think short term and this is a long term crisis. I'm putting forward a different theory. And that, that theory is, OK, all of these other things play a part. But the biggest problem is that this crisis landed on our laps at the worst possible historical moment. James Hansen testified before Congress in 1988. That was the, and he said that he could now decisively make the link between carbon emissions and warming. That was the moment when we lost all plausible deniability. Scientists knew beforehand, but this was the moment where it became the mainstream issue. That year, when, when the editors of Time magazine had to choose their man of the year, they were still calling it a man of the year then, they chose planet Earth and put planet Earth on the cover. That was the kind of consciousness that was rising. So what I do in the book is I ask, okay, what else was happening in 1988? Well, the, the, the free trade deal between Canada and the U.S. was signed, a historic moment in the advance of corporate globalization. Um, and the next year, the Berlin Wall collapsed. Francis Fukuyama is declaring history over. This was, you know, this in many ways is the story I told in The Shock Doctrine of how that triumphant ideology of market fundamentalism, as Joseph Stiglitz called it, swept the world. This was this was the moment when they declared victory, and there was no alternative, as Margaret Thatcher used to say. So the problem we had is that we have a, 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 the essence of a collective problem. We can only solve it with, 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 with real regulation, making the polluters pay, telling them they can't dig, dig the carbon out of the ground. Um, and, and we need to come together collectively to respond to this crisis. We need to invest in the public sphere. But it hits us at the precise moment when all of these things become non-starters. You have to cut back the public sphere. You can't regulate. You have to embrace pure laissez-faire economics. And, and so the argument I'm making is we cannot solve this crisis without a, without a profound ideological shift. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Naomi Klein is with us for the hour. Her latest book, This Changes Everything, Capitalism Versus the Climate. Stay with us.